His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a verbal message to the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, regarding bilateral relations and ways of enhancing them. The message has been delivered to the UAE's Minister for Presidential Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, by the head of Royal Protocol, Major General Khalifa Al Fadala. The meeting reviewed brotherly relations, joint cooperation, and issues of common concern. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the Asakhir Palace today. The Minister of Defense and the BDF Chief of Staff, in the presence of His Majesty the King's personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The meeting discussed the ongoing participation of the Bahrain Defense Forces men and their fruitful efforts in the Operation Decisive Storm and the Operation Restoring Hope within the Joint Forces of the Arab Coalition in service of Yemen, its people, and the region's security. The meeting also discussed future plans to develop and upgrade all units of the BDF. His Majesty the King commended the outstanding efforts of the BDF for the best interests of Bahrain, its security, stability, and development. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received the Asakhir Palace today. The Apostolic Vicar of Northern Arabia titular, Bishop Kamila Balin, who is currently on a visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King commended the efforts of Bishop Balin in the humanitarian fields to reinforce the values of good love and tolerance. His Majesty confirmed that Bahrain is proud of being a historic gathering place for different religions and civilizations that embrace everyone without discrimination. He highlighted the people of Bahrain's tolerance and welcoming of other religions out of its awareness and belief in humanitarian principles, and stressed that Bahrain will remain a model for tolerance and coexistence. The meeting reviewed ways of spreading the culture of religious dialogue and tolerance among followers of monotheistic religions, in addition to outlining the principles of moderation and rejection of extremism. His Majesty the King pointed out the leading initiatives in this regard, which included hosting conferences and meetings that contribute in consolidating the culture of tolerance and coexistence among different religions and granting religious freedoms. For his part, Bishop Camillo Balin expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the care and interest provided to Christians in the Kingdom of Bahrain. He added that thanks to the leadership of His Majesty the King, Bahrain embraces everyone without discrimination in a loving and cohesive society. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace, researcher Salim Al Rashdan, where he was honored to give His Majesty three paintings as gifts. His Majesty the King thanked Al Rashdan on the gifts and praised his efforts in preparing such artworks, wishing him further success. His Majesty also lauded the role of Bahrainis in contributing to the progress of Bahrain in various fields. Salim al Rashdan expressed appreciation to His Majesty's continuous support to Bahraini people, wishing Bahrain more prosperity and progress. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghudaybiyah Palace. The Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak on behalf of the cabinet wished His Royal Highness continued health and well-being. The Prime Minister for his part expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and everyone who followed up on his health status. He confirmed commitment to responsibility under the leadership of His Majesty the King to continue to serve the homeland and the people. In regards to his recent visit to Bahrain Investor Center, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to exert more efforts to facilitate license issuance for investors so as to contribute in upgrading the national economy and increase investments. He also commended the outstanding organization of the 24th Jewelry Arabia, which is considered an important annual economic event that reflects the kingdom's status in the fields of gold and jewelry manufacturing, congratulating its organizers on the show's success. The Prime Minister expressed thanks to the Deputy Premier Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak on the excellent organization of the 4th GCC Government Award Conference and Exhibition 2015. 
He commended the sessions of the event that embodies Bahrain's advanced level in the field of information technology in the world. In regards to the government's efforts to deal with the impact of the recent rainfall, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed the relevant authorities to follow up on the matter and outline needed procedures to deal with the issue. The Cabinet meeting reviewed a report by the Ministries of Housing and Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning on the procedures that have been taken in this regard. The Cabinet commended both ministries' efforts and His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's directed to follow up the status of drainage system projects. The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum regarding the implementation progress of the Government Action Plan for the years 2015 to 2018. The number of registered projects has amounted to 655, of which 325 at the national level within the six main priorities included in the program and 330 debt projects the ministries are implementing. The Executive Committee headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince is also following up on the implementation of 32 high-priority projects. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister then directed to continue follow-up on the progress of projects to ensure full and thorough implementation. The Cabinet approved a memorandum regarding a draft law to ratify the Arab Anti-Corruption Convention. The Convention aims to reinforce measures that prevent, combat and expose corruption in all its forms and other related crimes. The Convention also aims to strengthen Arab cooperation in this field. The Cabinet approved the memorandum regarding a draft law to ratify the Arab Convention Against Transnational Organized Crime. The agreement aims to reinforce Arab cooperation in the judicial and security fields. The Cabinet approved the memorandum regarding the Arab Convention Against Cybercrime, which aims to reinforce Arab cooperation in this field and ensure the safety of Arab societies. The Cabinet approved the memorandum regarding a draft law to ratify the Arab Convention for the transfer of inmates at penal and correctional institutions. The Convention aims to reinforce Arab cooperation in the field of criminal justice based on the principles of respect for national sovereignty and non-interference in the internal affairs of member st states of the Arab League. The Cabinet took note of a number of draft proposals by the Legislative Authority. Following the meeting, the Minister of Information Affairs and Shura and Representative Council Affairs held a press conference outlining the issues and decisions discussed during the Cabinet meeting. The Minister confirmed the government's commitment to its action plan for 2015 to 2018, which has been adopted by the Legislative Authority. In regards to the impact of heavy rainfall witnessed by the Kingdom earlier this week, the Minister outlined that there are 1,000 rainwater accumulations specified by the Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning, 350 of which have been dealt with. He explained that the housing projects which were damaged by the rain are not yet complete and are not connected to the drainage system. Also during the press conference, representatives of the Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning and the Ministry of Housing revealed temporary and permanent plans and efforts to deal with the rainy season. They explained the current situation and future plans in addition to coordination among services ministries which led to setting a plan to facilitate drainage of main roads, hospitals, entrances, schools, and to public places in order to limit any damage that might hinder traffic or disturb people. The Ministry of Works, Municipal Affairs, and Urban Planning announced launching a rainwater drainage project that covers 55 sites across Bahrain's governorates with the cost of 8.27 million Bahraini dinars, in addition to the existing project that already covers 55 spots. The ministry's representative said that the rain lasted for four continuous hours, which is equal to the normal rate of rainfall of five days, which is considered an exceptional situation. Meanwhile, the housing ministry's representative said the ministry is adopting an annual emergency plan since 2013 to deal with the rainy season. He said the housing projects that have been damaged due to the rainfall are not yet linked to the drainage system and confirmed that temporary solutions have been taken adding that the Ministry is working on solving the issues permanently. The wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa patronized today the Conference on Women in the Financial and Banking Sector called Leading the Change organized by the Central Bank of Bahrain, the CBB, 
and cooperation with the Supreme Council of Women. The CBB Governor Rashid Mohammed Al Maraj delivered a speech in which he expressed his thanks and appreciation to Her Royal Highness Princess Abika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa for showcasing and promoting the role of women in the financial and banking sector. He also hailed the remarkable efforts of Bahraini women in boosting the national economy. The CSW Secretary General Halil Ansari delivered a speech in which she underlined Bahraini women's significant efforts in the development of the economic march of the kingdom. The Conference on Women in the Financial and Banking Sector, Leading the Change, was organized under the patronage of Her Royal Highness, Princess Abicha bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and chairperson of the Supreme Council for Women, by the Central Bank of Bahrain, the CBB, and the Supreme Council of Women, the SCW. It boasted high-level attendance and a full agenda of esteemed speakers, male and female, from the region and around the world, representing the cause of diversity and the industry of finance. Events like this are critical to raise the level of the dialogue. You know, issues of diversity on boards, women in the workforce, these are global issues. And they only get resolved, they only evolve with structured debate, structured discussion, and in my opinion, structured planning. So both the speakers today talked very well about how both government and private industry really when they take an issue very seriously and structure a plan to approach it you see very good results you see tremendous results the event fell on the eve of bahraini women's day an annual commemoration of women in all sectors across the nation which marks the leadership's desire to encourage fuller participation of bahraini women on all fronts of bahrain's development it really is about support at the top be it government be it industry and without that um, you know, the women can only step up, in this case, the women can only step up and really say, yes, we're here. We want to do it. We're qualified to do it. But you need the support at the top for the hiring. That is where that first decision is going to get made. Once you have the sort of diversity you now see in the UK, those women can step up and be leaders and mentors themselves. But it takes someone getting them there in the first place. Engaging senior leadership is really, really important. Uh, we found with our FTSE chairman that some of them were a little bit hesitant at the beginning, some of them wanted to wait and see if this would go away, others got it. Now everybody gets it and once the chairman gets it, the CEO gets it, then the rest of the workforce get it as well and things start to happen, action matters. The conference followed a full year of programs designed to highlight successes and best practices and address the challenges still faced by women seeking to advance their careers within the banking and financial sector. Bahrain has long been at the vanguard of advancing women's status in the region, but still, in the face of case studies from around the world, it was necessary to ask, do these strategies require adaptation for deployment in the region? I think there are nuances in every geography, but actually what we see is the same set of issues that are holding women back, that are preventing them from progressing to senior leadership in the workplace. So it's unconscious bias, it's, um, it's you know, wanting, not wanting to recruit in your own image, uh, and irrespective of which sector you're looking at, the issues are the same and it's the same across country too. The success stories shared here today detail strategic frameworks which have been proven to integrate female workers at every level of the corporate hierarchy and thus reap the diverse benefits of diversity. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, was presented the award of the Outstanding Academic Achievement achieved by Sheikha Hassa School for Girls in the attendance of the former chairman of the CIS Board of Directors, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa, the current chairman of the Board of Directors, Sheikh Mohammed bin Ahmed bin Sultan Al Khalifa, members of the Board of Directors and students. His Highness Sheikh Abdullah expressed his congratulations to the attendees regarding the remarkable academic achievement, which reflects His Majesty the King's constant support to the educational march in the kingdom. His Highness held Sheikh Hassa School's high-quality educational programs, wishing the director and members of the school further progress. For their part, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdulaziz Al Khalifa and Sheikh Mohammed bin Sultan Al Khalifa expressed their thanks and appreciation to His Highness hailing the leadership's constant support to the educational field and the kingdom.
A very good evening. Welcome to the Business News here on Bahrain Television. The Bahrain All Shares Index closed today at 1,232.57 points, an increase of 3.98 points above yesterday's closing level. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 71% of total share value traded, while the investment sector also saw a rise in trading. Today, 90 transactions took place in total, comprising 3,016,077 shares worth 337,812 Bahraini dinars.